Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and today we're going to talk about lasers. A little bit about how they function and what they do. Laser is actually an acronym that stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. But what does that mean? Well, we are going to quickly explore how lasers work and I'll show you a couple lasers maybe. We'll see what we can do. At the very end, we'll burn a couple things. Well, because everybody likes burning things. But anyhow, until that time, enjoy the show. A laser is merely a beam of coherent light created by a process known as stimulated emission. Let us understand each of these two ideas one at a time. Coherent light may be thought of as a light moving in the same direction at the same time, as a beam. While the light from a light bulb is projected in all directions, quickly reducing in intensity as the distance from the bulb grows, the light from a laser is emitted in a straight line, spreading out only the tiniest bit over great distances. Because of this uniformity of direction, this coherence. Laser light is said to be coherent. Stimulated emission occurs when the material used by the laser to create the beam, known as the lasing medium, is caused to emit this coherent light. The stimulated light, the stimulation of light emission, is the key to how lasers work. Besides epic space battles, lasers have been lasers have many everyday uses. In fact, many of us use lasers in our everyday lives without even noticing it. Some common applications are optical storage like CDs, Blu-ray, DVD, cat toys, concert special effects, medical usage, remember LASIK eye surgery, cavity treatment, scar tattoo removal. They're used in range fighters, range finders. Uh, laser pointers. Um, they've been used to create all kinds of the special conditions used to test uh, quantum mechanical effects. There are many types of laser. Primarily, lasers are broken down by the type of medium they use to create the laser light, also known as the lasing medium. Additionally, also known as the gain medium. The lasing media can be gas, crystal, plasma, semiconductor, and even liquid. Sometimes the name of the energy source used to excite the lasing medium, known as the pump, is used to categorize the lasers. For example, a gas laser might use a flash lamp to excite the gas, or an electrical current, or even another laser beam. When the pump, which is what is used to excite the medium, is used to identify the laser, it is named both for its lazy medium and the pump. For example, one may have a ruby laser, which is named for the type of media or medium that, that creates the laser beam, in this case a ruby, but one may also call that a flash lamp pumped ruby laser. If, if, if the flash lamp itself is to be part of the name. Where the pump or the energy source is the flash lamp and the lasing medium is a ruby crystal. The most common laser found in the world today is the diode laser or semiconductor laser. This is the sort of laser you keep seeing in this video. Let's see how these sorts of lasers work in general. Lasers work by taking advantage of two interesting properties of atoms, spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. Let's look at both. Electrons are said to orbit atoms at various configurations due to their energy. They don't really orbit, they kind of float about as probability clouds, but whatever, we'll look at them as orbiting in the classical sense. In some atoms, electrons of a lower energy orbit can be pushed into a higher 
energy orbit due to the external stimulation by an energy source, like a flash lamp or electric current. We will call this energy source the pump that pumps them to a higher energy state. These excited electrons found in the lasing medium now occupy a higher energy state due to the energy provided by the external power source, which we call a pump. So the light, the electrical current, whatever it is that excites the laser is, is called the pump. And the actual laser itself, the thing that makes the lasing occur, is the lasing medium. After remaining in this orbit for a short time, these electrons spontaneously return to a lower orbit and emit the excess energy as a photon. The spontaneously emitted photon is always the same wavelength, therefore it's the same energy and the same color. Now consider two atoms of the same lasing medium. Both of these electrons, both of, the, both of these atoms have electrons that are pumped into higher energy states. Their entire population of electrons throughout the lasing medium have been inverted from their normal low rest states into higher energy states. When this occurs in mass, it is known as a population inversion. One of the atom's electrons, if one of the atom's electrons were to spontaneously drop into a lower energy state and emit a photon, a really curious thing happens. As this photon passes another excited electron, it stimulates that electron into dropping into a lower energy state and emitting its photon too. These stimulated emissions of photons all have the exact same energy and wavelength. They move in the same direction. Very curious. Outside of the lasing medium, mirrors may be placed on either side to force the laser photons back into the lasing medium, initiating more and more of these stimulated emissions, creating a more and more powerful laser. Well, it's not more powerful, it's more intense. There's more laser energy. It's always the same energy. This is called optical resonation. One of the optical resonator mirrors must be partially reflecting to let a laser beam through. So there you have it. So let's take a look at the laser now, fire one up and actually see what it does. As you can see before you is a laser. No, it's not going to be this laser pen. Come on, that would be lame. Well, it's not a bad laser pen actually. This is a pretty potent little laser pen. Danger. Giant scary laser. Do not look into its beam with your remaining eye. Hmm, that's probably important. What's more important than that, however, is this little sign right here. Class 3B laser in operation. This is not a Class 3B laser. However, this is a Class 3B laser. Right there, this thing right here. This is a Class 3B laser. This is the power module for the Class 3B laser. This is Hatsune Miko. Look at that, you can't even put the laser dot on her without it going like crazy, crazy, crazy. I'd play the music, but I'd probably get sued immediately by somebody. All right, thank you, Hatsune Miko. All right, so this guy right here is a diode pump solid state laser, known as a DPSS laser. And um, let me just kind of lift it up here and kind of show it to you. This is the actual laser module itself. The laser is not capable of being powered on right this moment, but it will be in just a moment. Uh, what you have here is you have an infrared laser beam that's a diode laser. This works by having um, a population inversion again, but in this case you have a negative type semiconductor and a positive type semiconductor, and in between the two they're sandwiched together. When the power and current is applied, what you end up with is you end up with kind of a, a space in between where the positives and the negatives, the holes, if you like, are called the positive uh, junction, and the negatives, if you like, the electrons, are called the uh, negative junction. And when they come together, that you end up with a artificially induced uh, population inversion by means of semiconductors.
and basically put the current ones to jump across there and you have the um, levels sort of already set up there. In this case the actual material you're dealing with is aluminum gallium arsenide. It puts out an 808 nanometer wavelength which is pretty much not visible by the human eye. It's, it's uh, infrared. But that actual uh, uh, beam that's produced by here is actually pumped into a different kind of crystal, a neodymium doped yttrium uh, um, orthovanidate crystal. And that crystal will put out a really, 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 really nice high energy um, uh, beam. It's actually lower energy than the um, original uh, wavelength that you saw. It puts out a 1064 nanometer, a little bit wider of a wave uh, beam of light. That beam is kind of neat, but we couldn't see it. It could be blinding you right now, and you wouldn't be able to see it. By the way, as everybody complains about me pointing the laser at the laser at the um, uh, um, uh, camera, first off, I have my laser goggles on, so I have safety goggles on. Second off, the damn thing's not powered, and it's not plugged in, and it doesn't have its key on, and it's not fired up, and like five other FDA-based safety regulations. And the cover's in front of the beam, and all those other things, so I don't want to hear it. But anyway, <clears throat> that laser beam is last but not least frequency doubled and what happens is um, the laser beam itself goes into a uh, potassium titanyl phosphate crystal. Now let me explain how that whole concept works. Basically you have a, a diode here that's emitting laser light and that diode is actually a laser that's pumping a second laser crystal. Uh, yttrium aluminum garnet. It's a um, called a YAG laser and it, it produces a really 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 nice beam of laser light. That beam of laser light, though, is not visible to us, so it gets cut in half, if you like. You end up with double the number of photons at half the wavelength each. And that it's called a frequency doubler. And basically put the 532 nanometer uh, wavelength photons that are emitted are visible by our eye. In fact, they're a nice, beautiful green color. So we're going to put this thing down right here, and we're going to fire it up in just a second. And I want you to take a look, and Hatsune Miko here can sit with us while we look. And see if we can the see what this thing looks solid like. State laser, known as a DPSS. The DPSS laser is very common and may be found in laser pointers and even in lab grade research lasers, like the one seen here. An infrared aluminum gallium arsenide diode laser emits an 818 nanometer photon beam. These uh, pump a neodymium doped yttrium uh, uh, orthovanidate or neodymium doped yttrium aluminum garnet laser, which emits 1,064 nanometers of laser light. This light is frequency doubled using a potassium titanium phosphate crystal to become 532 nanometers, a beautiful green color. Notice the lenses that are focusing this laser light. And the result is a nice laser beam shooting out of the laser. Okay, so we've put up a piece of paper right there, and here's the laser, and I have, all importantly, the key. Now let's fire this on. The most important thing you can possibly do is have to safety goggles like these guys right here. Why? Because you don't want to burn your eyeballs out. So let's plug in the key. We're ready to go. Fire on the laser. Laser is now on. Powered up. We are ready to rock and roll. Laser light is good, ready to go. And let's start turning on the power a little bit and see what we get. The laser's still probably warming up a little. And there it is. If you look very carefully, you'll see a little dot appearing. Let's zoom in. You see that little dot right there? That is a very, very, very small laser dot. It doesn't even compare to the laser pen. As you can see, the laser pen is tremendously brighter. But we can quickly change that. Let's zoom out by increasing this. Now, we don't want to shoot this at a, at a white piece of paper for too long because, quite frankly, it'll blind us after a little while as we start increasing the power. gets brighter and brighter and brighter and as you can see it's quite bright at this point so let's cut it down 
and we're going to see what it looks like in the dark when our eyeballs don't have to deal with that. Of course, having the safety goggles on makes a humongous difference, let me tell you. All right, we're now in total darkness. If we cut the light on a flashlight, you can see that we have the laser pointed right here against this target, which is sort of way down that way. See the target? And why am I pointing with a flashlight? And I have a laser pin. There's the laser pin. See the laser dot right there? That's where we're going to be targeting. So, you will be able to see the actual laser beam because of a function of lasers called relay scattering, which allows you to see the laser beam. Increasing the power to 50%. We're almost there. Almost there. 50%. Can we make it go faster and stronger? Uh, yeah. Let's go all the way to the top. All the way to the maximum. We are almost there, and yep, there we are, 100%. That is a significant amount of laser light, as you can see. Hopefully it's not burning the wall. It's quite a lot of laser light. If you can see it reflecting off of this, as you can see the beam is quite powerful. Now I have on protective goggles which allow me to be able to look and see this without like losing my eyesight. If I did not have these protective goggles, it would hurt a lot. And yes, I've heard people whining about the camera, you know, oh, the camera will be damaged. Well, if it is damaged, it's damaged. Um, I like this camera, but I can get another one. This is very, very interesting. Alright, well, let's cut that down a little bit and burn something. Why? Because everyone likes to burn stuff. Let's just admit we like to burn stuff. Cutting it down to a safe level before we go over there so we don't have a repeat of that one time when we barbecued our hand.